Hey everybody, this is uh, Jessica Alstrom and I am doing a video for you uh, to bother you because you got nothing else going on. We're all sitting at home in our sweatpants and our space buns twiddling our thumbs and I really wanted to take this opportunity to kind of like get inside your head a little bit. Um, I have an opportunity to work in all different levels of consciousness. Um, they call me the alchemist and really what my job here on planet earth is, is to help raise the vibration, to give you both sides of the story, to show you potentials and your limits, to show you how to find the diamonds inside the coal, which is the true alchemy process is, is, you know, the light is found inside the dark. And, you know, I'm going through this process just like the rest of the planet and never, ever, ever in history has such a, such an event have happened that created such a global impact. You know, we've had a lot of different systems break down and we've had some things collapse and the whole rest of the world looks and creates judgment and then rebuilds and decides who they are based on that. But never have we ever been in anything all together. So it's really amazing times. We've never been in these times before. This is completely uncharted water for everyone. This is uncharted water for scientists, for doctors, for intuitives, because a lot of people think that we can read the future being an intuitive, which is true to some degree, but what we are looking at when we're looking at future timelines is we're looking at what's called probabilities. And when we look at probabilities, we're looking at what could happen. Now, hopefully by now, if you are on my page or you're on my channel um, and you're subscribing to this kind of quantum reality meets spiritual point that creates magic, then you're in the know and you do realize at this point that we do create a reality. And you're probably wondering why the hell would we all create something like this? Well, why the hell not? So I'm hoping that you'll spend the next hour with me and go down, you know, go down the rabbit hole so that you can really open your mind, open your heart to some different perspectives, some different understandings. I'm going to give you some 411 that I receive from, you know, higher levels of consciousness. Um, give you the breakdown of, of what the virus actually is um, and how it's manifested so rapidly. Um, I'm hoping to share some information that kind of brings some peace to your heart about, you know, when this is going to end and, and why it's happening. And it's all going to come from a quantum perspective because, you know, as scientists are understanding now, that the universe exists of particles of atomic energy waiting to be focused and imagined upon to create reality, which means basically our thoughts, our feelings, our ideas, our impulses, our desires, when focused upon, begin to build. And when they begin to build, right, they start to become. And when they start to become, then they are manifested. And this happens with everything in the whole entire universe. We happen to be experts here on planet Earth because we use something called time and space to decide, discern, choose, create, materialize. We're using a slowed down version. Um, we're kind of like on the iPhone 4 here when the rest of the universe is rocking an iPhone 12. We're doing everything a little bit slower, like dial up here. But as the, the ascension progresses and the evolution um, you know, begins to multiply on the planet, everything tends to speed up, right? Now we know thoughts create our reality. And well, at least we hope we, we, hope we know that. And a lot of you are scratching your heads right now <coughs> at, um, don't worry, I'm not coughing because I have Corona. Um, a lot of you are scratching your heads right now because None of you could have expected the, the world to be so rocked in such a short amount of time. So let's pull back. Let's go down and adventure together. Let's, let's look at this quantumly. Let's look at this all inclusively. Let's look at this as a whole system. Let's look at this as dark and light and positive and negative. And let's look at where we really are as a collective species right now. So in order for me to give you the end result, I gotta kind of take you back to how we got to this point of manifesting this. First and foremost, 
we are obviously on a very, very fast upturn of, of um, you know, evolution. Over the last 25 years, you have seen a huge increase in technology and awareness. Those are the two biggest increases that the planet has, has really delivered. It is its level of consciousness increasing, which people are doing more, thinking more, inventing more, being more, creating more, knowing more, right? Higher levels of consciousness, realizations, understandings, right? We're starting to pull out all of our ancient medicine, our ancient wisdom. We're starting to unravel codes. We're starting to unwind things. And, and as we do that, as a collective, it, uh, because the nature of who we are as um, you know, very sensitive, very um, you know, inclusive creatures, we are always in a state of curiosity. Well, why is this and how is this? So we're always asking, we're always, we're always asking when we don't know we're asking. Now you guys think, well, I did not create this from you know, my conscious awareness. And no, you didn't, but you did create it just like the rest of us from our unconscious awareness. Now your conscious awareness is, is your go-getter. It's your futuristic probability, which I'll be okay once I get over there. It is the one that gets you up in the morning. It is your willpower. Now, anyone who's out there knows that the willpower will never be what the programming is in the subconscious or the patterns that are in the subconscious. It's like, I'll wake up, I'll work out, I'll go to the gym, I'll eat good. By two o'clock, you're in the Wendy's drive-thru. Not right now, you're in delivery, but still you're getting you're, 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 you're getting the belief system to activate before you have the willpower, which means whatever your underlying patterns are, behaviors, right, are going to be the thing that at the end of the day, you're going to act out. So your belief systems, based in what you witness, observe, practice, and do, become your personality. They become your behavior. And therefore, we're acting things out. And for a really long time, matter of fact, since the last Great Depression, it was a lot of grief and it was a lot of suffering. And there was a lot of people who said, we'll never go through this again. We're going to build, we're going to create, we're going to do, you know, we're going to work differently. We're going to, we're, we're going to, um, we're going to work hard. Right. And I'll tell you right now, you are a creator being, you are never here to work hard. You are here to work smart. You were here to self-realize yourself and learn how to use this multidimensional body to create and, and manifest reality. You have electromagnetic energy that brings forth to you that which you desire or resist, your choice, because as a magnet, I am, I, I am in a state of desire even if I'm in resistance because I am desiring to keep something away. Now, desire is the central engine backbone of manifestation. So what are you ever you're desiring or in resistance of desiring, which means that which you do not want has the same magnitude and ability to manifest in your physical reality than the thing that you love. Because I'll tell you, what you're gonna manifest the most is what you're obsessively thinking about, negative or positive. Human nature tells us to focus on the negative to keep it at bay or to watch it or so try to fix it. But that's backwards in the quantum universe because that what you look at grows. So we've been in the rat race for a really long time as humans, as people, and as, um, as kind of segregated beings. You know, we've, we've always been taught that you got to do it by yourself and, you know, keep your own counsel, but be very, very selfless and give, 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 and don't receive because then there's going to be conditions and logistics attached to that. You know, don't feel, um, don't think outside of what is okay. Um, settling is part of nature. You must settle if you want to coexist. If you want to be a social creature, you're going to have to bend your will so that you can fit in. And all of these belief systems that we've tapped into over the last, I don't know, a couple of thousand years, we have always kind of rejected because at the backbone of who we are, we didn't quite believe it. So there's always been this sense of questioning. There's always been a curiosity. There's always been a, a resonant knowing that that's not true. And so there's always a push pull going on from a conscious reality. So let's fast forward a little bit. You know, we're building, building skyscrapers. We're 
you know, thrashing through the planet, we're using natural resources, you know, it's like we're, we're the ones as humans who cut down the trees to make paper, to print on the paper, don't cut down the trees. That's the equivalent of our intelligent level as a, as a collective species. Now, I'm not talking about you individually, the ones who are doing your work and, and you're part of the cause. But on the other side of that, those that are in such resistance of what is happening to Mother Earth are also putting into the collective pain and suffering because again, they are in resistance of what they're seeing. There is in resistance of what the world is doing. So they're fighting against now the person who's making the paper out of the trees. So you see. So, you know, you have this conscious awareness that exists outside of you. And it's kind of like if you were ever playing a video game and your archetype was inside the game and you were walking around looking for different doors, you know, you got to look at this objective at this holographic universe as the person who is literally holding the joystick, controlling the game. That would be what we would call your higher self. Now, your higher self is the one who's constantly sending you messages through your intuition, through your heart um, about where to go and how to do to, to basically create and master the game here because you are limited in your perspective because you are very, very easily influenced. Okay. This is all part of what I'm going to end off talking about. How easily you are influenced will determine your state of being. So if you are easily influenced, we would put that in the category of kind of like the sheeple. It's like, I'm fine. And then someone's like, run, run, run. And you're just running because you have no idea. And you're like, I'm scared now too. And I have no idea why. Because the human energy field is set up for social, socialism. It's, uh, it's set up to socially be inspired. It's, it's to communicate. The field communicates. So when there's a lot of fear around you, your field communicates with that. Then it decides and discernment, discernment, determines, excuse me, what's in your belief systems and then gives you feelings and emotions based on that evidence. And then you decide whether that's real or not through your perceiver, your brain. You tell the rest of your body, your body tells you through hormones what the hell is going on. And now all of a sudden you're, in, you're terrified. And we forget in those moments that we are in a holographic universe where we create our own reality. And even though we read the books and we study the tapes and we listen to the podcasts and we do all of these things, then it's really about you um, checking in with yourself and getting that social distance. You're going to see how when I'm done with this talk here, how everything is so in divine order for you to level up very quickly. This right here that is happening is the ultimate biohack, okay? Whether the powers of B are negative or positive, it doesn't matter because the light uses the dark and the dark uses its light to expand. We need both aspects in order to create. And we use chaos as a form of rocking the boat and mixing it up. So, with this evidence of my energy field expanding, deciding who I am constantly, I need to pay attention to who I'm around, what I'm listening to, what I'm doing, because my subconscious is always being influenced. Now, take this 20 years. You've been raised in a family where love equals pain. You've been in lack. You've been in suffering. You've worked really, 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 really hard. You are an empath. You're sensitive. You're a good person. You know, you may make mistakes and you really, hard, you know, hoard yourself on those mistakes and you don't let yourself feel love because you failed 10 times. And, and this is what's going on in your universe, right? And we're having kids and we're working jobs and we're paying our bills and we're doing the best we can. And we never once stop and look up and ask ourselves, are we in the present moment? Do we choose this? Because it feels like it's being chosen for me and I got to keep running on this hamster wheel because if I stop... You know, the mortgage isn't going to get paid and I'm not going to be loved and I'm not going to be, I'm going to be humiliated and I'm going to die because I'm going to be hungry. I mean, these are really the thoughts that are going down at the primal level of what gets you up in the morning and gets you to do the things that you're doing. So fast forward, you know, this, this last hundred years and all we've done is we have created new addictions and new avoidance techniques to resist being in the present moment. So what we do is we really, 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 really hard. We burn our nervous systems out. 
our, our immunity drops, we kind of get sick, we take a nice, you know, two month sabbatical into India, we sit with the guru, guru, we learn meditation, we chant, we do some breath work, we might do a little ayahuasca, come home, right back into the rat race that now therefore sucks even worse because you are woke, right? Now you're looking at this going, this is absolutely not who I am. And this is kind of what, what we're seeing from this higher place of consciousness is this push pull within ourselves, this desire to be a good mom and a good father and a good mother and a good provider and a good leader and a good employee and a good boss, while all the time not really deciding if, if any of it is really who and what we are. We are living life where our choices were made for us before we knew who we were. Now, a lot of you guys have gone on a woke journey and you know, you've quit the job and you've pulled your 401ks out and you're living the high life and you're starting your little community businesses and you know, the shamans are coming back into form and the intuitives are coming on the line and, and everybody's kind of resurrecting from that, that really amazing space of consciousness that they've always been and they're saying no thank you to society but the society is not wired to, to support you, us, in doing that for very long, especially when we're influenced by certain boxes that we all have to abide in. So when you ask, why would we manifest the coronavirus? My question to you is, why would we not? Why would we not? Every negative is a shortcut. Every time we, we you know, get triggered, it is an opportunity for growth. Any time that we have to stop living and running towards the future and, and really take stock and ownership of the present moment is when we begin to thrive as a person, as a nation, as a population, as a society, as a planet. And until that moment, we have never, until this moment, you guys, we have never, ever, ever had an excuse big enough to pull the plug, ever. Now, I know some of you guys are losing your jobs. Some of you are losing loved ones. Some of you are getting sick. Some of you have never felt fear like this before. Some of you have never felt bliss like this before. Regardless of what scenario you are playing out in your personal reality, I need you to understand, I'd like you to understand that whatever you're going through, you're growing through. Whatever is happening in your physical reality is a tag team experience with your higher perspective to get you to look and feel in the direction of your true purpose and dreams. Because as you guys know, I did Second Sunday, I've been doing Second Sunday, which is my energetic intuitive broadcast that I've been doing every month since 2014. Giving you the 411 about this present moment, what was coming all along, it is here. It is our opportunity to have the best excuse in history to take a breath, to take a rest, to stop, it is an excuse to take care of our bodies, right? It is an excuse to take care of our emotions. It is an excuse to take care of our um, minds, our homes, our children, the way we, we, we choose to. Yes, we're overwhelmed. Yes, we, we, you know, we ask. It's just like a child who says, I don't want to work. I don't want to go to school. I don't want to go to school. And then you don't go to school and you miss your friends, right? Because we are playing a game called duality. And in duality, as long as we are playing in duality, you will always have both sides of the force, right? So if we were looking at what, what is actually at play right now, we've got 5D integration, right? And then we've got 5G integration. Hmm, interesting, right? 5G is is hitting the planet. It's causing the human body to kind of get offline and get back online. Now what that does to human body is at a primal level, kind of freaks out, like what's happening? Like my system's getting crossed. You know, you have to realize that your chakra system and your energy field is nothing more than satellite communication to the cosmos. So when something is as big or can infiltrate that signal, 
it can bump you in and out of line. Just like 5G is comparable um, to, you know, you getting this amazing setup right in your house and you get it like all tricked out with Wi-Fi and then your neighbor gets a bigger system, right? And can pull the bandwidth or you're in an apartment complex and all of a sudden you're online and someone else is pulling the signal. So you have to realize that you are a signal. So whatever is pulling on you is going to cause a little interrupt in your flow. Now, if you've ever, you know, choked, right? And you get that sense, that deadly sense of fear that washes over you for like a second, right? Imagine that your body is feeling that when your energy field gets choked, okay? So what happens is enough of this is happening throughout the time as we are, our bodies are learning how to regulate this new bandwidth that it's causing a constant state of fight or flight at a chemical level, right? The nervous system is going fight or flight and you're just sitting here online, you're just swiping Instagram. You don't realize that your body's going in and offline. It can also happen with toxic people can pull you in and offline, toxic food can pull you in and out of line, too much stress, not enough sleep, whatever, is disallowing that energy field to flow is gonna cause the body to feel like it's dying. You're not going to notice this, right? You're just like nothing because your conscious awareness is in the, is in the future and in the past. You don't even realize that your body's like, help, right? So we've got, we've got duality playing out. We've got the integration and the, the becoming of 5D reality, which is infinite possibilities. It's utopia, it's heaven on earth. And then we've got 5G, which is radioactive technology designed to basically um, interrupt our sophisticated bio quantum machines called bodies. Now, obviously these are supercomputers and ain't nothing gonna happen to them if we are in alignment with who we are. But if you're not right here, 5G is not gonna be right with you, right? Because you're gonna be easily influenced. You are not going to be driving this vehicle. It's unattended. You're gonna get the 911 call from the body. You're gonna get the pain. You're gonna get something bigger than you to get your attention. This is all bigger than us and it has our attention. Now, we look at this particular virus. Now, I'm gonna do something called happy hour three times a week till this quarantine is over because, you know, why the hell not? We're, we're still gonna have some happy times. I'm gonna get online, I'm gonna educate you guys through biochemistry, through specialized nutrition, through epigenetics, through quantum sciences, all done in a bar atmosphere. And we're gonna make some quantum cocktails that are all virus, um, virus healing cocktails, right? We're not gonna get too drunk or we're gonna get woke, okay? So understanding that a virus is, is really not trying to get inside of your body. It's not, it, it just happens to be there and it can only grow if the host is, if the host isn't paying attention, if the host is constantly in fight or flight, if the host is too stressed out, if the host's immunity is too low, which is why we're seeing it in older people and, and, and you know, things like that, because there's so much stress and duress and that body's probably on 10, 15 different medications. Now let's talk a little bit about the immunity. The immune, the immune system was designed to kill everything and anything in small doses all the time, all day long, right? All the time, all day long. Just like if I cut my arm, I'll live through that, right? Cut my body in half, may not, right? You see, like in gentle uh, amounts, the body's army is like, we got this, then it remembers it, it puts it in its little Google Fiber file, and then when it comes back, mm -mm. that was the whole point of creating vaccines in the beginning, was to give the body just enough for the army to go in and just attack it, and then know how to fight the enemy. The knowledge of fighting the enemy went into the Google file and never again would that be a possibility that that could invade ever. And that was the purpose of vaccines, which was beautiful when it started, when they started mixing heavy metals, chemical reactions um, of um, pesticides and all kinds of fillers to keep its shelf life safe. 
that's when the vaccine started to hurt us in big doses, right? Long story short, moving in time, we are a collective built in high levels of stress. We run too much adrenaline, which creates an acidic environment for our systems. We don't sleep because we're worried about what we're supposed to do tomorrow. We're constantly in a state of lack. We're just living that just enough reality. And our immunity is low because now we've got 5G hitting us. So I hope at this point of my conversation, nobody's really that surprised that we all manifested this for different reasons. Every one of us manifested the coronavirus happening in their reality for a specific reason. Now, it's gonna be different than why I did it. You know, maybe it, it, it is for you to wake up with your body and get a loving, healthy relationship with that system because your body can fight this very, very easily. And I'm gonna tell you how, okay? Maybe this is about chasing money. Maybe this is about, you know, constantly working a job that is not who you are anymore. And you didn't know how to walk away because you didn't want to let, let your family down, right? Maybe you've got some other unspoken secretive reason for manifesting this. And it may be terrifying you, but it is also the antidote to your stress. So what scares us makes us stronger in the way that we have to be more present to it. So going back to the virus, as long as the immunity is strong in the body, the body can handle anything and everything, including 5G, right? But you got to be here. You got to be now. You got to be within. So we could look at this coronavirus through all kinds of lenses. We could go deep into the matrix story and we could go conspiracy theory. But I will tell you that it is a huge blessing in disguise that is going to help us take full, full responsibility of ourselves. Our bodies, we're going to all get super educated, get nothing else to do. You know, we're not going to run out of food. No one's going to need to learn how to hunt tacos or Doritos. You don't need to do that. Your banks will not close, okay? Because the money system, although is changing in the next two to five years, has to happen in an organic place of surrender, not stress. So the markets crashing and the money disappearing would not help our cause of rebooting. We are in a gentle, gentle awakening reboot of planet Earth. We are getting a major, major, major second chance to stop. We are getting an amazing opportunity to look within. We are being asked to stay six feet away from each other. And it's ironic that the human energy field on a normal day reaches about three and a half. To me, what that's saying is stay in your own lane. Keep your eyes on your own paper for the first time, right? Remember how to play because your kids are home all day. Remember how to work with them. Remember how to eat. Remember how to be still. Remember, put ourselves back together, okay? And like I said on this radio show that I did this morning, you know, for the people that are going through hell right now, you know, why would they choose that? Well, I will tell you that I am a very stubborn woman and I have had to hit my rock bottom half a dozen times in my 44 years before the light bulb went off. And I will tell you that those rock bottoms, whether they be illnesses, you know, I had an autoimmune disease, I had a raging eating disorder, I was in toxic relationships, I was broke, blah, 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 story of earth. I didn't get the memo until I got the pain. The pain put me into the present moment. The pain woke me up. The pain asked me, do you wanna live through this? And I said, yes. And it said, challenge accepted. Now you got to do the work to rebuild your relationship with your body, your relationship with money, your relationship with your family, your relationship with yourself. And that is what we are being given right now. So let's look at some prophecies, right? I'm going to go, when you guys watch my happy hour, which we three times a week, it's going to be loaded with nutrition um, as, far as, uh, as far as viruses and how to um, kick their ass, okay? So viruses are something that they can only grow if, the, if there's a very big acidic host involved. If there's no acid, they cannot grow, 
right? Because they use amino acids or proteins to accelerate. So this would be a really great opportunity for you guys to decrease acid and increase amino acids, okay? So like things that are very acidic in your body, wipe it out, okay? And things that actually grow a natural healthy immunity, put them in. And, and through uh, our happy hour conversations, uh, we'll be giving you guys different, uh, really inexpensive, probably stuff you already have um, off your shelves of fun little cocktails and foods that you guys can make that literally are medicine free, okay? One thing that I want to remind you of is that when you get a virus, the first thing that your body wants to do is defeat it. It's turning all the way on. It knows what to do, people. And what is the first thing that uncomfortable humans do when we feel bad? We block the feeling. We take the ibuprofen, we take the Tylenol, and we block the feeling of the fever. Now, every single case that they said that they couldn't find the symptoms of coronavirus, we're constantly on some sort of ibuprofen regimen or painkiller regimen because they weren't getting the signal. They weren't getting the fever. If they would have got the fever, the body would have been like, we got this. Let's turn all the way on. Let's throw this virus in the fire. Let's cook it out. We're bigger than this, but no, we're stressed out. Our immunity is low, right? We're not sleeping. We don't know how we're going to pay rent next month anyways. And then I start to get a fever, right? Because my body's going in and out of frequencies of bad food, bad people, and 5G. And all of a sudden I get a fever and I'm like, where's my ibuprofen? I popped six of those, right? 10 days later, didn't even know I had symptoms. I'm, you know, at the grocery store, licking my palms, putting it on your face, you know, like everybody does at the grocery store, right? And, you know, bumping into people and rubbing yourself on people and just, just touching everything and touching your face and reinfecting and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, long story. But this is all fixable, guys. So let's go into some of the prophecies. You know, you guys know that I'm not a preacher, that I do not, that I do not um, collaborate or own any sort of religious modality at all. I don't stand behind any particular culture or idea. I'm just straight out of quantum here. And I will tell you though, there's a lot of truth with the ideas and maybe some of you will reject this language, but as far as the idea of what the Christ consciousness is. Now the Christ consciousness is, it's an idea. It's, and what it means is crystallized, it crystallized consciousness, okay? If you understand a crystal, it's a prism, it's light, it's information, it's all knowing, it's source energy. This is what Christ consciousness is. Now, regardless if you read the Bible or didn't read the Bible, which I have not, but I have downloaded through the quantum field everything that I need to know about the Christ consciousness in order to understand where we are at the exact right moment, at the exact right time in history, for this to be the most divine prophecy that we have ever manifested on a global level together. Okay? Now, the idea of, of Jesus Christ, right? Well, I don't know. He lived about 2,000 years ago. So the stories go, right? And 2,000 years ago is about roughly when they started taking notes. Okay. We don't know who was taking notes, but there was notes taken. And if you read The Course in Miracle, which I have, there's a lot of very valuable information about the idea of the Christ consciousness coming to this planet to, to show the world that we are creators, you know, the Bible says Jesus is the son of God, but in Sumerian, son means extension. So what he was actually saying is I'm an extension of God, right? Well, so his story goes. So in the prophecy, 2000 years, you know, I will send the second coming, us, right? Um, and we've been, I don't know, hardcore on this kind of quantum journey for a good 25 to 50 years of deep understanding of science, even though Einstein and Tesla had us beat in the beginning of it because they were downloading from the quantum field 
all of this stuff that we would need for this moment in time, free energy, right? Creating our own reality, time travel, right? It's all been here waiting for us to get our head out of the rat race and take time to pay attention. So the ideas are, this is all happening so ironically right around what they would call Easter. And what do we call Easter is the resurrection. Resurrection of what? What are we resurrecting from? What does this feel like? Does this feel like a cocooning to anybody? Does this feel like when we get out of this, we're gonna have butterfly wings? Cause I can guarantee you every single person on the planet, when they call off this quarantine is gonna be so damn grateful for what they have freedom of. They're gonna be so damn grateful if they can go back to the job. They're gonna be grateful to go out on the streets and go shopping again and go to the movies again and go to the friend's house again. And gratitude is what is required to elevate consciousness on this planet. The lack of gratitude that we have had has brought the manifestation of this into being so that we could level up and take our power back in the present moment and appreciate the little toilet paper that you have left. I bet you're loving that toilet paper now. You're using it sparingly. You're wasting more. You're wasting less natural resources by consuming less because when we're on a ration, we have to pay attention. And if you understand conscious parenting, limited based challenges actually turns you into a genius, right? When you limit how much options you have, you actually turn into a genius. Do you know the frequency of boredom is what in ignites genius? The frequency of boredom ignites invention. So if this is all divine design, which it is, guaranteed, divine design, 2,000 years ago, 2020. We are 2020, but 2,000 years ago, during a resurrection phase where basically the entire planet is told to go within, right? Go within so that we may be reborn, okay? And it's very fascinating as a scientist who studies biochemistry and epigenetics and early childhood development and quantum sciences and quantum fields and human nature and how you can really see the rhythm of how integrate, 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 okay, great. All of it works together in harmony, in harmony. And because the internet, is a symbol of what they call the Akashic Records. It's instant information and instant connection. It is the, I, the idea of telepathy before we activate our fourth chakra. Now, if you guys have been watching me over the years in Second Sunday, I have been taking you through each phase of this awakening. We've gone through the root, we have gone through the sacral, we went to the solar plexus to take our power back. And now we are in the most terrifying, wonderful opening that we've ever had. Your heart would never open if you were killing yourself at your job. Your heart is never going to open if you don't appreciate the loved ones that you have access to. You are never going to appreciate if you don't, uh, you're never going to manifest and create and, and appreciate yourself and open your heart if you don't love yourself and you can't love yourself if you're never here. If you're always here and here and pleasing this person and rescuing this person, you're not here. So the heart opens self-love, right? Through you taking your courage out into the world and demonstrating your purpose by unifying yourself with like-minded, amazing people that we don't let ourselves do when we're so ra ravaged by ego and judgment and separation and fear. We don't let ourselves do that. And we have all these excuses why we can't open our heart. You know, so-and-so hurt me and you know, I really want to date, but you know, I'm afraid I'm going to get hurt and I always choose the wrong guys. And you have to remember that you're creating your reality. This is my stories a couple of years ago, by the way. So these were all stories that I had to unfold on my heart opening adventure. And I called this year publicly the year of the vision quest. The year of the vision quest was when you were going to be taken into your deepest, darkest pain in order to self-realize. So each person on the planet is going through their own personal hologram of the coronavirus epidemic through manifestation. So you're going through your story. I'm going through my story. But collectively, we're all in this together, which actually makes us feel better. 
Because the way that humans bond is through commiseration. And through commiseration is really how we start to feel safe. Oh, good, you're going through it too. Oh, good, you don't have toilet paper either. Thank God. Okay, good. Now I can go within and spend some time in this meditation. You know, I've been coaching and mentoring all over the world in over 130 countries for about seven years now. And the excuses that I hear the most are, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough resources to meditate, to, you know, do my breath work, to work on my anxiety, to work on my relationship, right? Um, and now we have removed that excuse, right? It's interesting, too, if we look at the idea of, of Noah's Ark and two-by-twos and who you're with right now. Like, take notice of who are you on lockdown with, who are you not on lockdown with. Like, look and see what the messages are. Because the downloads that I got about this conversation that I'm having with you were very interested because it said everybody was going to embark on their own individual vision quest. And this vision quest was going to be very specific for each person in the universe, even though you may be doing it with someone else. Your kids are going through a different experience than you are. Your spouse is going through a different experience. So each person is on their own little Jumanji, right? And you're having to kind of go through and be yet all work together somehow. That's a great movie to watch since you've got nothing else to do. Just understand the idea that you are in a virtual video game where you might not be exactly how you want to be, but you have limitations and you have potentials. You do. Built in, in what I call the toolbox, the intuitive toolbox that is your chakra system, your heart center, okay? So taking this opportunity to recognize who you have access to, who you don't have access to, and then see what actual tests you are being asked by your higher self. Now, this isn't where God is judging us. This isn't where you're being tested to decide if you stay or go. It is your test you're giving yourself to give you an opportunity to have excuses. This is the first time in human history that we have an opportunity to have an excuse to slow down, to be patient, to look within, to stop, to stop. It's the best frequency in the world. When your computer is acting crazy, you unplug it. The world's been acting crazy, it's been unplugged. We literally on our, are on a global timeout, okay? And what we do in our room, right, is we self-discover, we become self-aware, we organize, right? We get in shape, we get our relationship back with our bodies, we get our relationship back with our loved ones, we work on ourselves, we develop projects, we create, we paint, we dance, we sing, we love, we remember what we, you know, it's, it's one of those things, it's like we don't appreciate what we have until we don't have it. Do you see how many lessons just from the universe we are being gifted right now with this? So I think the whole point of this conversation is about perspective. It is about owning your part of the story. It is about deciding and choosing who you are and who you will be when those doors open to the world again. You know, are you gonna take this opportunity to complain and jump into fear and worry? Because you are allowed to do that. But I will tell you what is on the other side of that is more of that. And what is on the other side of that, if you take the opportunity to, to really connect with gratitude and appreciation, and you work on living more of a minimal, minimalistic reality, and you, you take stock of what you do have versus what you don't have, and you celebrate the people, places, and things in your life that have remained, and if the job is gone, ask yourself this question, is, was that really me, or was I chasing something? Do I really just want to go on the beach and, and sell shells instead of this, you know, $500,000 a year corporate job, even though I have the house and the car and the money. You ask yourself because if you manifested, whatever you manifested, it happened for you and it may not make sense to your ego identity, but it makes sense to your heart and it makes sense to your higher self. And if you got enough peace, I guarantee you, you would be in a state of gratitude. Now you might be terrified, which is okay terrified of what you're going to actually do. But I will tell you that if the system, the society, the collective could reach a state of surrender. Now, surrender is not failure. Surrender is allowing. If you allow yourself, I'm not saying surrender to the government. I'm saying surrender to yourself. 
Surrender to the things that you've been holding onto for dear life that have been killing you. When the mass population reaches the frequency of, of surrender, which is the seventh step of manifestation, all the lights will turn back on and the old systems will begin to dissipate because they're not being held on by fear. The old apps on the old computer will begin to disappear and the new systems can start making room. And the old paradigm of structured religion and structured business and structured money will begin to wave, but not before it's replaced. And I will tell you, I do have a lot of information that I, I don't always share, but the new money systems that are already in effect, that are already waiting for us, thank the millennials, they knew exactly, remember they're hardwired, they've got the iPhone 12, right? We've got the iPhone 7 on my generation. And they know exactly how and what works, the new energy systems, the new money systems, the new government systems, um, the new medicine is on us guys, healers, teachers, guides, remembering. And it is all about us standing up right now and saying, I can take a breath. And if I can reach this pivotal point of surrender, then I actually move into manifestation. So you start to manifest your heart's desire instead of your fear's desires. And this is the point of this virus happening in 2020 to give you the ultimate vision quest give you the ultimate treasure hunt back to your heart, to give you all the buttons and all of the fear that you need to overcome to level up to be who you really came to be. And you're doing it in a gentle place. You guys, our parents went to war. Our grandparents went to war. We're just on the couch. Let's take a moment and appreciate that we didn't have to create World War III to get to this level of gratitude, right? We may be fighting over some toilet paper, but that's it, right? And that's all. And I will tell you, by looking around my environment, I stay off the news, I stay off the fear reports, I'm seeing more kids outside playing, I'm seeing more parents outside playing, I'm seeing my neighbors on Facebook learning how to play the piano, I'm seeing my friends in Ireland, you know, painting pictures. So to me, vibration, if you can understand the vibrational universe, fear versus love, you get bored, you start getting creative, creative activates your frontal cortex, cortex activates your pineal gland, you start to become superhuman, who knows, we might all, might all become superheroes just much faster, okay? So I got a lot more information. I literally could talk to you guys for 12 hours, but I'm gonna do it in the mode of happy hour. I'll be doing it three times a week, two o'clock central time, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It'll be on my uh, Jessica Alstrom Alchemist page, you're on Facebook. It'll be put on YouTube, but it will be live right here, two o'clock with my Quantum Revolution girls. So we can chop it up, talk girl talk, talk boy talk. We'll have some guests on. Uh, we'll talk to people in different countries and see how it's affecting them while we all drink our, our, uh, our, our coronavirus killing cocktails. And it'll be a fun time and we'll all be in this together. So I hope you guys join me Monday, Wednesday, and Friday right here. I hope that you found some ease. I hope you found some heart. I hope you found some love in yourself by listening to this because nothing is broken. We, we, in order to create new, we have to get rid of the old and this is the gentlest, sweetest possible way. So staying out of fear increases your immunity, guys, right? Most of the people who have the corona had a really depleted immune system and nervous system. And if you're feeling any symptoms, I would just say, you guys, do not do the ibuprofen because it will block the symptoms. Let your body firehouse it up and lots of vitamin C, okay? That's going to boost your immunity. Um, and, and I'll give you guys the list when we do happy hour because that's pretty much what we're going to be doing is talking about all the different ways that we can increase our ability to beat the system. Okay. Thank you guys so much for joining me. This was my pleasure to come on here and share all of this with you. There's nothing but peace to look forward to. Trust me, I'm an intuitive. I know I have seen the probabilities. I've seen the possibilities. Love wins. I've been saying that forever, right? It's all good in the hood. We've got infinite possibilities. It's all good. We got this. So I will see you guys all very soon at happy hour and we will, um, we will give you the recipe a day before so that you can make the cocktail and drink with us so we can all be in this together. So I will see you guys very soon.